spiritual governor of Earth, but also of that planet in the binary system of Capella. As a matter of fact, Shikru Shavir told me that Jesus Christ is the head, the governor of five planets. One that is already a happy place uh, that surrounds the trinary system of Sirius. The other one, which is nowadays regenerated in Capella, surrounding the binary system of Capella. Of course, Earth, which is up to this date a trials and uh, how do you say? Expiations. Expiations. Trials and expiations. Expiations planet, yeah. And also a, a planet that nowadays is very primitive. Uh, that Chico Xavier told me that its name is Kiron in another planetary system. And nowadays Jesus Christ himself is forming a fifth planet so that he can uh, guide, guide the life there also. So it is, not, it is not a coincidence that Jesus Christ received all the exiles, uh, exiled spirits from Capella here on Earth because there is a law of solidarity and fraternity between those five planets. And you can see different versions of the same book. And now today we're going to, to speak about those three chapters. Chapter three, chapter five, and chapter six. All of them are related to the alien civilization on Earth. As I told you, uh, those spirits that were expelled from Capella, they gathered here on Earth in four different groups and also in four different times. That's why the, the, the exile from them, for them, uh, it was not at once. They, they came in different times. The first ones are the ones that we are going to talk about today, the aliens. The second ones were the Hindu people. The third ones, the Egyptians, and the last ones, the Hebrews. Those, those four ethnic groups, they gathered here in the same uh, sympathies and symptonies and also uh, regarding their beliefs, their expressions, their culture, that were uh, reality in Capella and stayed reality here on Earth. Uh, as you know, Capella, if we see, see the, the northern hemisphere view, uh, you can see right here in the constellation of Cocheiro or uh, Auriga. Okay. It is just some facts about Capella. The light would take 42 years traveling the speed of light of 300,000 kilometers per second and uh, if we can we could go in this velocity, would take us 42 years to reach Capella. And so it's about 9 trillion, 460 billion, 800 million kilometers from here. It, it represents 63,072 uh, times the distance between Earth and the Sun. So it's Although it's a very distant planet, a very distant star system, it is considered in our neighborhood. 42 light years is nothing in universal measures. So 
So we have those spirits that came to her, to her. some those uh, some twelve thousand years ago, and the last ones five, seven thousand years ago, between ten thousand BC and five thousand BC. And the first ones uh, uh, that came to Earth would incarnate in this region here, that's the aliens. After that, they would mi migrate to the tigers and tigers here, where today is Iraq and Iran. The second group is the Hindu or Hindi that stayed here in the Indus Valley. The third group, of course, the Egyptians that stayed, that uh, formed the Egyptian civilization. And with that, after that, the Hebrew that also incarnated here and then migrate to Palestine. You can see here that there is the Yellow River in China. They were not exiled from Capella, they were exiled from another planet and uh, they were here on Earth before the Capella exiles. All the, the yellow ethnic group on Earth, Japan, Korea, uh, China, all those groups they came from a different planet. They were also exiled, but not from Capella, uh, and most probably from the, the star system of uh, Aldebaran. And the, the four great civilizations in the, the Aryans that migrated, they migrated to the Indus Valley also, they migrated to Mesopotamia, to, to where today is Iraq and Iran and all the Middle East. Also the Egyptians, but also the Aryans, they didn't stay in one place. They traveled all over Europe, Asia, Central Asia, the, the Indus Valley, the, also the Ganges Valley in India, and also the Middle East and the North Africa. That's why they are very important. To, they shape our reality here on Earth because they were not fixed in one place. They travel all around Earth. So in, in, if we, we see the ages of history on Earth, the, the arrival of the Capellas uh, exiles were between here, the, me sorry, the Mesolithic time, the prehistorical time of Mesolithic, and also the Paleolithic, no, sorry, the Neolithic time between 12, 10,000 BC and 5,000 BC. Of course, those are the Aryans, the, the first ones that came, and uh, Emmanuel wrote through Chico Xavier that before them, there were no uh, white schemes, uh, white ethnicity here on Earth. There were only the, the black ethnicity and also the yellow ethnicity. So they came from Capella too? All they came from, no, no, no not, the, not, the, not those ones. The Aryans were the first from Capella. And then they then came the Hindus. So the, from the, Capella. Yeah, from Capella the Egyptians and the Hebrews. And this is the, 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 the region of Earth where they came first. 
Central Asia, right? This very center of Asia here. And we can see uh, here, today this is the fight, right? Iraq, Iran, and it's north of Iran, north of Afghanistan. Here the alien origins are here. This is a, a sea that was named Aral, and from that, and that sea was formed by two big rivers. You see the rivers here? One is here, the other one is here, all the way. The Sarian rivers, both has the name of Sarian, and they form the Aral Sea, that nowadays are dried out. But in those times, it was a plenty of, there was plenty of water that time, and they, they took their name from the name of those rivers. That na they named those rivers, right? And one of the biggest civilizations of the Aryans was the Andronovo civilization. That conquered all the Central Asia. Also the Big Mac civilization, the Yaz civilization, the Swat, all of that are the first civilizations of the Aryans. You can see here one important revelation through Shiko Sharia because in the, the notes after the chapter three of In the Way of to the Light, Emmanuel says that the first migrations from the Aryan people started here at Mount Pamir. You see here the Mount Pamir? It's very close to the Himalayas, okay? You can see the snow here. So uh, at that time, when Chico Xavier wrote that in Brazil, through his psychographic mediumship, Emmanuel wrote that in the notes after chapter three. Uh, at that time, in 1937, the anthropology, uh, they didn't know about that, about Mount Pamir first settlements. It was not known by history. Eighty years passed here in the 21st century that those first settlements uh, was uh, they were uh, discovered by anthropology and the science. Right? And here uh, we can see where it all started. There is a, a photograph of those mountains. The in, in the Pamir region. Today it's Tajik, Tajikistan, the, the country that holds this site. It's Tajik, Tajikistan, right? You can see the, the rivers. It's all, all very mountain. That's why it took so long to discover those uh, ancient sites and of course full of rivers, big rivers, uh, all of them uh, result from uh, the ice of the, uh, you know, the, the higher mountains. So the, the, this, the, you can see here Iran, right? Here, Afghanistan, and here Tajikistan. And this, the site that they came first is right here in Tajikistan nowadays. And also is neighbor of Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. All of those are countries that were separated uh, after the, uh, the Soviet 
union uh, just stop to exist. And you can see here also the Pamir Valley and the rivers that were so important to those first settlements. And here the region so important to the development of Earth. From that, that spot they spread all over Central Asia, they spread all over the Indian Valley here on, on, in the south, and also they went west where today is Iran, Iraq, the Middle East, and then they entered also Europe through, Tur out to, through Turkey and also through the Islamic uh, nowadays Islamic countries. You can see also uh, the, both rivers, they they are the Amu Daria and the Sir Daria rivers. Here is the Sir Daria river and here is the Amu Daria river. Mudaria River. So this is the Pamir. You can see here that the Mount Pike Pamir is very close to the Himalayas. This is one positive thing that Emmanuel says about the Aryan civilization. And that's one thing why we all can be related to them. Because in a sense, we descend from them. Because they mixed up with the, the earthly populations. But they have also one big mistake. They had uh, one big problem. From Capella, they were the only group of people that were not religious. They did not believe in God. They didn't have religious practices. And they were, in a sense, very materialistic, very practical, very materialistic, and they also were very revolted because they lost their paradise, in a sense, what that was uh, Capella. And because of that, when he, they arrived here on, on Earth, Emmanuel told us that they would think, okay, we are here in a different planet, let make this planet our planet. And because of that, they are all, we are also very violent and very uh, warriors. And uh, they, as soon as they arrived here, they start started the wars. Very aggressive. Very aggressive. Yes. 
they did not have prejudice, but they were very aggressive. They, uh, they were, uh, in their mind, they had to conquer all of us, right? And to, uh, to submit all the human population. So the first, here's the Pamir here, right? And the first civilizations that started, uh, all of them, the Andronovo, the Sintakashia, the Afanasevo, the Bimak, all of them, those were the first civilizations of the Aryans. And you can see here that we now can uh, test the, the information of Emmanuel, how they migrate all over Central Asia, uh, India, the Middle East, Europe. You can see all those uh, pathways that they uh, conquer in the, the in their migrations all over the earth. There is a sketch of an Aryan warrior. And there comes a time around 2600 BC that they resolve to conquer also the Indian subcontinent. Of course, the, they were situated north of the Indian subcontinent and they decided to go south and they implemented a very <coughs> profound transformation in the Hindu society because this, the Hindus that also came from Capella they were here already mainly they sit, they were situated here in the Hindus valley this very <coughs> Uh, how do you say, F fertile, this very fertile uh, region of India nowadays, uh, the Hindus Valley, uh, the Hindus Valley. And they, uh, in the first, they came here, and the civilization of the Hindus Valley, and then the civilization, the Vedic civilization, that came about around 1400 BC. And this uh, civilization received the influence of the Aryans. And it's very important in the history of India and also in the history of all languages that most of the countries, I would say almost 80%, of all the countries nowadays speak languages that derive from those uh, Sanskrit language, the mother language of the Hindu, the Hindi, and the Aryans. So the first uh, migration from Capella for the second group that was the Hindus they situated here in the Hindus Valley. They have their most important city, the Morenho Daro, which nowadays is the largest archeological site of the world. This city is known to have at least 80,000 inhabitants. And the second one, largest one was the Harappa city and at those at that time they were only the Hindi uh, civilization from Capella. Then came the, the this phase is called the Harappan phase of the Indian uh, history. Now the, the Aryans came from the north, invading those fertile uh, earth here, right? And they took over 
and the second, the invasion, the first period was the invasion of the Aryans in India, and the second period was the fusion of the Indian society, the Hindu society, with the Aryans. This fusion happened to be around 1400 BC. And you can see that why this is important, because it's the Vedic uh, history of India, and also the origin of all, almost all religion on earth came from the influence of the Hindu that passed away to the Aryans, their notions of spirituality, of uh, reincarnation, of mediumship, of uh, heaven in, in their sense. And so that uh, the second river dried out and they migrate all the way to the Ganges River. You can see here the Ganges River that is born in the Himalayas and cross all north of India until nowadays Calcutta and Bangladesh. So this north of India nowadays all were conquered by those Aryan invaders that and they mixed up with the Hindu society. What, why is that so important? Because this time we have the, the, the textbook of this time, which, it, which is called the Vedas. And the Vedas is nothing more than books of knowledge. And they are very so much important now until this day because we can say that only 10% of those writings are translated, are understandable to our culture nowadays, only 10%. Still, we still have 90% of those writings that we don't comprehend. And they, they some of them uh, are very advanced because they, they speak of flying machines. They speak about atomic bombs. They speak about a nuclear war. And uh, they speak about an annihilation. Of course, uh, our historians are kind of, uh, you know, surprised about all of those things because we know that Earth didn't have that technology at that time. But as a matter of fact, what are they speaking about? They are speaking about the nuclear war that took place 7,000 years ago, 5,000 years BC, not here on Earth, but in the planet that they came from. Uh, surrounding the binary system of Capella. Chico Xavier told me that himself. And because of that destruction is why they were degraded. They were exiled or expelled from Capella and exiled here on Earth. Right. But the, the Vedas is the way that they could express them, themselves and pass away to the future re generations that are us that can now comprehend what they are talking about. And in this time you can see all the paintings and all the representations of the Vedic society in India. You can see uh, a dark skin, the Hindu, and a light skin the aliens. All in all of you can see here the dark dark skin, dark skin and the white skin. Of course the Vedas are a holy sacred knowledge for them, right? And their main language is the mother language of all our language, the Sanskrit. And also there is the Rig Veda. The Rig Veda 
is the writings of hymns and poems that they uh, chanted their uh, their hope to go back to their land in Capella. And also it's important to know that in that time the, the, the main religious concept of God came from those those men and women in the Vedic society. The one that divided God in three persons. Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Of course Brahma is as they say the creator of everything. Vishnu is the conserver of everything and Shiva is the destructor of everything. That's why in the Roman Catholic and uh, culture they also have the, the sacred trinity. God, the, the, the creator, the Holy Spirit and, and Jesus, right? It's a, an earlier concept that was brought to Christianism as uh, Lucas wrote and we can see that in the book of Chico Xavier, Paul and Stephen in the city of Antiochia of Syria, Antiochia of Syria, because they received, Antiochia was a, a very a commercial and uh, an open city in, in times of philosophers and religions and also a commercial uh, city that united the, the Far East, the Middle East and Europe. And at that time the, the Indians, the Hindu people that came to Antiochia brought those concepts to Christianity in the first century. And unfortunately those early Christians, most of them uh, were uh, combated by John the Evangelist and Ignacio the Antiochia, but they could not cope with that, you know, interpolation of reality. But it's it's important because from this notion, the uh, Aryan and the Hindu society influenced all human civilizations in terms of philosophy and religion. Nowadays we can see the Hindu people and here is the Sanskrit, the mother language of us all. Why it's so important? Because uh, as the Aryans did not sell up in one place, like the Hindus did, they did settle in the Indian subcontinent. The Egyptians settled in nearby the Nile River, and the Hebrews also settled in the Nile River, and then after that in, in Palestine, right? And they stayed there. And they constructed a, a, a way of living that everyone else except them were put apart. Like in, in, in India, they uh, is, uh, established the castes society. And uh, in, the, in Egy Egypt, they established you know, also the hierarchy of the illuminated. And also in the Hebrew society, they closed themselves and they could not marry, they could not, uh, you know, interrelate with other uh, ethnic, ethnicities and so that they stayed closed. They stayed very, in, in a way, very closed societies. Uh, different from that, the Aryan people didn't care. I'm here, they thought, I'm here on Earth 
and Earth will be my paradise. I don't care anymore about Capella. Earth will be my paradise so that I want to rule here. And to rule here means that I can and I must mix up with all human societies, all earthly beings, so that I can travel and I can conquer. So because of that, all those, this is 530 BC, you can see here in 530 BC, all this green area, almost all of Europe, the Central Asia, the also Turkey here, which is the Libyan society, uh, the Middle East here, especially Iran, the old Persian, the Medians, and the Parsians, East Iranian, all the Armenians, all of Middle East here, and also the Indic from India, the Scythians from North Central Asia, uh, and also here we can see the ancient Greeks here, the Celtics, the Proto-Islavics, the Proto-Baltics, the Proto-Germanics, which also is the origin of the English people, right? All of that in 530 BC were in effect. And of course, as they traveled all around the, those areas, and they mixed up with the, the original population, the earthly populations, primitive populations of those areas, they uh, invented new languages, understand? And also important is the Iranic languages. They are also Aryans. Nowadays, all those languages that came from Syria to Pakistan, all of them are uh, consequences of the uh, Aryans mixing with the local populations. You can see uh, every color here is one different language. You see here the Kurds between Turkey and Syria and Iraq. You can see the Iranian here. You can see the Afghanistan here. The Pashtun here, North Pakistan. The Baluchistan here is South Pakistan. The Tajikistan here, all of that. Those are called nowadays the Iranic language. And they were all derived from the Aryan society, the Hindus. Avian society. And the genetic division of Iranic languages also started with the proto iranic and was divided over the time, over the period of time, the centuries and the, the, the places that they were settled. And now we can see the influence of the Hindu the Aryan Hindu or Indo-European languages that when they arrived in Europe they brought to existence all those languages that we speak today. English, Danish, Norwegian, Sweden, Germany, uh, Ger German, sorry, uh, ah. Italian, Portuguese, Spanish, French, Greek, all of those languages, they are all related to the modern language of Sanskrit and are descendant of the Indo-European origin. You can see here, the, even the, the Hindi nowadays spoken in North India, uh, here the Iranian that is spoken in Iran and Pakistan. Here we can see the, the Armenian. Uh, we can see also the Anatolian or Turk. 
we can see here the Greek, the Albanian, the Latin languages in blue, which is Romanian, Italian, French, Spanish, and Portuguese, and all uh, small languages like the Gallic, and also the Anglo-Saxon languages, Germany, uh, Dutch, Danish, Sweden, Norwegian, English, and Islandic. And also the Celtic languages, like in, in Ireland and in Brit Britain, they are all derived from the Indo-Aryan languages. Uh, nowadays, most, almost all of Europe speak in uh, languages that derive from that source. One exception, the Hungarian. The second exception, the Finlandese, the Finland language. Only two countries don't, ex don't speak Indo-Aryan languages. And of course, nowadays you can see uh, the Indo-European family, all the Slavic countries, Russia, uh, Ukraine, Belarusia, Poland, Czech Republic, all of them. Also, the ones here near the Baltic and uh, around here, the Albanians, the Greeks, Germany, Austrians, Swiss, the Swiss, the Hollands, and the Belgians and Hollands, the Danish people, the Sweden, the Norwegian, Great Britain, and Greenland, and here France, Italy, Spain, and Portuguese. And here is the tree of languages that came to existence because of the Aryan people. You can see all those green ones are the ones that are spoken nowadays in wow. some countries. And the, the red ones are the ones that are dead. They are not spoken nowadays. But if we, if we count every green language that is spoken here in this tree of Indo-Aryan people, Indo-Aryan languages, we have 176 languages. And so that we can understand their very profound influence in our culture, in our way of living, right? Uh, we can see here, uh, let's see, the Portuguese is around, here's Portuguese. And before Portuguese, the Galician that is spoken in Santiago de Compostela and Galicia, north of Spain, and so on. Uh, also, English is around here. But it, this is very interesting, isn't it? Wow. Composite. Mauricio, <laughs> help me. Acho que acabou a bateria. While he does this, can, can I ask a question? Sure. The Bhagavadamita, I cannot even say, it comes from the Vedas? Yes, uh, but that's another story, story because we have to, to go uh, more deeply into the Hindu society. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, that's the worst. Yeah? Nowadays, the countries that speak one Hindu European language are those in green. The, the more green is widely spoken, the light green is not widely spoken, but more than 50% of the population speak. And also, you can see the, the, the blue ones. The blue ones here also are uh, the, the, the Turkish language. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, that also is from those origin uh, like, like the, the third the Turks, the Syrians, the Lebanese, and also the, uh, the Uzbekistan, and here the Latins. So you ha you have almost eighty percent of the of the countries owners uh, speaking languages from that people. Here's an interesting design from one very known area. He was the head of the hills, Atla, and he conquered many parts of Central Asia, India, and West, also to the Balkans, to uh, the, the eastern part of Europe. You can see here in Europe, the hills dominated almost everything in the center of Europe and nowadays the Slavic countries. He lived in the 5th century after Christ. Do you know who he is? Adolf Hitler. Mm. One of the incarnations of Adolf Hitler. And here, uh, I don't know if it's up here. Well, it's up here. It's And here is, uh, to close our, our lecture today, we are going to see Europe from 600 BC to nowadays. And why it is always, uh, you, you, all over the, those centuries, we have di different wars. Tecla in Baixo. It's very interesting because we can understand uh, the problems with war and, you know, the, uh, the aggressiveness, the, the, the desire to conquer. see the influence here of the Arians arriving in Europe and conquering the, the, the sites and uh, the countries and everything. And as they enter, they are forming new societies, new nations, new empires, and so on.
you see the borders are always changing. Mm -hmm. They are not, not fixed borders. genesis of the Roman Empire here. Some centuries before Christ. The expansion of the Roman Empire to the Gallias, where today is France, All those regions, the Iberia Peninsula, and also Britain, north of Africa, when Christ himself uh, was incarnated in Palestine. All those books, sorry. Uh, here I have it. It's okay. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, we have no time more. Thank you so much. And if we could see that the, I left the, the, this video here with, with Mauricio, who else uh, wants to see it all, all over. You can see all the wars and the conquerors, the, the problems of Europe, of the Middle East. And we can understand why we face so much problems, especially nowadays in the Middle East in those <coughs> regions and also the, 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 the Islamic countries and Europe, all the, the, the roots of these misunderstandings about, you know, uh, the situation, the political, the uh, social, political, philosophical uh, misunderstandings between those people that we as a matter of fact, we are part of all this. And this is the heritage of the avian society. In, in a way, uh, it's our father society, it's our uh, origin. And it's materialistic, it's violent, it, it is a society that is based on wars, on conquerors, and that's a, a big problem that we must solve. In the other hand, uh, they, they were not so prejudiced about the others. They mixed up with others. And also they, are very, they were very practical, practical. And because of them, we can have here on the earth the scientific thought. Because they were very pragmatic. And that's uh, the main characteristics of the avian saga that we, as a, as a whole, inherited. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you, Gerald. We have a little Q&A now.